back! It's time for the 2024 Urban NerdCon. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Barely Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with the hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is not on assignment, or maybe he is on assignment, but I think we're going to be able to get him in. and We'll see what we can do about that. And we should have another special guest to take us a deeper dive in the mid-majors. We give you a full circle of what that looks like, and then we'll talk about some games of the week. Uh, with that being said, welcome to episode 489 and counting to 500 of Inside the HBC Sports Live Radio Show and Podcast, the show that's covering the sporting HBC Dash for all things HBC Sports. For institutions large and small, from the NEIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC Sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBC athletic programs and the business of HBC Sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cabell, along with my co-hosts, Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to Case Wage 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University. With that being said, Charles, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Doc. No well. We got a lot of uh, HBCU news sitting out there, so... I mean, uh, man, then we got a big weekend of basketball coming up, so we'll jump into everything. So let's get into it. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THD Agency, LLC. THD Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. I did want to give a small shout-out. G. Boone brought it to my attention. I saw it clicking that way. We have reached 1,000 viewers on Inside the HBC Sports Lab on YouTube, and I just wanted to shout out all those that have got us to that level. Still a little unique for us. We don't go live on our own channel. We do it as a on-demand, and I did that purposely as we were trying to do that organically. I wanted to see uh, as a test pilot, and I'll do it, you know, as a study, you know, always trying to find a way to do research and dig up that side of uh, what I do professionally. So while we go live, uh, as we do on BCSN, my JBN, if you would, we go live on Facebook that provides us a different framework and on other social media platforms. But now we have clips the 1K uh, subscribers on YouTube on demand framework uh, versus just going live and seeing what that looks like. So Big dynamic, big announcement when you think about how we did it, which is different from all the rest, which is what we say we want to be. But again, it's good to be in the house and get in here. And let's go to you, Charles, in terms of 
some news today. What's on your mind? Well, this is uh, news, and uh, we uh, credit Reggie Flood. He dropped this news uh, this afternoon. Uh, as it looks as though uh, former Alcorn State uh, coach Fred McNair is set to join the Southern University coaching staff. So uh, big news coming out of uh, Baton Rouge today. I hope it certainly works out. You know, we've talked a lot with McNair, a good guy, in so many different ways in terms of down the earth of how he treats the media folks that work with him and just folks that are fans of him and watched him literally as he played years through the SWAC and seen him as assistant coach win the grind and getting the head coaching chance. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm like totally excited for him or a bit nervous. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I bet there are a lot of fans that are in between. They're not sure to be excited for big him up. Certainly uh, for those that are friends, colleagues on that side, you are, but I'm sure there are a couple of folks out there that are a little bit concerned. Hmm. Or, um, kind well, of discombobulated in some ways. Where are you coming from this side of things? It brings up an interesting dilemma um, uh, in terms of what will his role be with the staff or whatever the case might be. Uh, uh, Willie Titan, uh, well, of course, was part of that staff uh, last year uh, in terms of uh, calling plays and things of that nature. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what the dynamic becomes down there. But, you know, you talk about brain trust. Wow. You know, Titan and Fred and Nair, you know, two stalwarts of the 1980s uh, calling plays uh, or potentially, you know, in the mix in, t- in terms of uh, calling plays down there at Southern. Uh, Southern saying they're back in the football business. It's going to be very uh, – Interesting to see. This is going to be such a wide open uh, fall season. I mean, we saw the contract with uh, Grandma's head coach. I think it's what two with an option or something to that effect. Yeah. So they are in win now mode. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's going to be uh, very interesting to see uh, what we have uh, coming up this upcoming season. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, you know, not a lot of returning quarterbacks, particularly those. Uh, that many people would, you know, clamor as, a, you know, a high returning guy. So you have some that are in the mix, but people are still trying to figure out who they are, who they might be. Various coaches have changed and updates. So it's a lot of question marks. I'm not sure the last time I've seen a season that you come in with so many question marks from top to bottom. You know, yeah, FAMU that won the championship last year. You know, changing of the guard, how is that going to play on them? Obviously, they have a lot of talent coming back, so they feel good about the talent. But like yeah. anything, until you get into it, you never know. Jackson State head coach uh, getting into second year. You have a couple of coaches going into their third year. So a lot of mix. We've talked about this a couple of weeks ago in terms of only one uh, head coach comes back when you did the expansion of the SWAC in 2021, just to give an example of how much new it is. So you're exactly right. Fascinating to see what it looks like. Uh, before you know it, we'll be in the spring football. Uh, with that being said, we had an HBCU Legacy Bowl career. Fair will offer hundreds of job opportunities for Sports Illustrated. I mean, this is coming from Sports Illustrated, I should say, uh, which is February the 22nd, that Thursday, as well as that Friday on the 23rd, noon to 5 on Thursday and 9 a.m. to 5 on Friday. We'll have students down there for Texas Southern University that will participate in this, get a chance to stay for the game and be a part of this. Fascinating to see what that looks like. So just kind of wanted to shout it out since we find a way to always talk a little bit about football. With that being said, are you still in your mode for baseball? Obviously, you got coming up Major League Baseball uh, coming up this week. Vero uh, Beach in terms of facility down there. Uh, some intriguing matchups. I also wanted to shout out the plug. You know, you had last week with softball, HBCU softball that took mm-hmm. place. Shout out to Howard that dominated that, scored over eight runs. Their closest matchup was a 3-2 matchup against Alabama State. But mm-hmm. they beat the top teams in the SWAC, um, whether it was Alabama State, uh, pre-COVID they won the championship and then they won it afterwards. Last two years has been Prairie View. They got down with both of those. Uh, but this week you have another one in Montgomery that will be uh, fascinating in a lot of ways to kind of watch to see how that goes. So I'm intrigued about 
what that might look like with those matchups uh, Friday, Saturday. You have Alabama a and Alabama State, Alcorn, FAMU, Grambling, Howard, which I'm fascinated to see hmm. uh, run it again, Southern, and then you get D2, Tuskegee, SIEC in the mix, and Tennessee State. So a variety of teams. We saw a and come in there last week um, that had a solid We Couldn't really push – uh, that much uh, going on, but now you got softball again. So I'm liking these ideas of these classics. Kind of started off many years ago with Langston being able to bring programs out there to play in their tournament. Now you see some other tournaments popping off of uh, HBCUs. A couple of years ago, Atlanta did his thing, and now you see Montgomery getting in the mix. So fascinating to see what that looks like. Any thoughts in terms of the matchups this week with softball? I mean, those, those are very interesting matchups, especially uh, when you talk about uh, uh, Alabama State, Howard uh, playing uh, in this tournament. That, that, that's, that's, that's pretty exciting. That's, you know, it's, it's kind of what we want to see when we start talking about uh, wanting to see uh, those top teams in various conferences play each other. We started to see it in basketball. We started to see it in baseball uh, and, and, and now softball. So it's always great to see that. Good stuff. Good stuff. I see we got Mike. The sneak in here. I told the people you were coming. Everybody was waiting on you, Mike. They, they were like, where's Mike? I said, he's coming. He's coming. He's not on the side. How's it going, Mike? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, doing, it's going good, Doc. Uh, just settled in here. Uh, had to knock out a quick lecture. Um, but uh, glad to be in the no, no, lab no, 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 tonight. No, no, no. With... You said that real fast. Somebody is allowing you to be in front of their class, Mike. Man, it's it's every fall and spring, man. They I don't know what it is they allow me to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scary thought. You know, seriously, it's good stuff with the experience that you have out in the marketplace to bring an executive into uh, the classroom to talk about the business, chemical engineering, environmental. So you get clinical the professor. traditional clinical professor. That's that's a big deal. Like Charles, get out there putting in that work, man. Y'all bringing some. St- intriguing components to the classroom where you're just not in the books like myself. You know, it's, it's, it's important to have you all around. Yeah. Hey, hey, but I, I will, sh- I will share a, a thought with you. There was a uh, here on the yard and uh, uh, there was a lady, Phil- I, it's Phyllis. Uh, I forget her last name. And she yeah, said, I know Phyllis. You look familiar. She was like, are you on that show with that boy, Charles and that boy, uh, Dr. Bill? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "Well, you should have said that." She said, <laughs> "But I had to throw you with him." But y'all get instant recognition. I, I just, I'm not still in the look. <laughs> hey, all, all you have to do is show up, Mike. You get all. Show up. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, I got one of the interesting matches we talk about in the uh, fan uh, with the softball. <laughs> They finally get it back on again oh. Oh, okay. in terms of this matchup on softball side. So I'm intrigued about that. We haven't seen that matchup. Usually it's on the football side that used to get people excited. Now it's going to get into some softball, and we'll see what that looks like. I'd like to see more of those matchups, but we say that all the time. But with that being said, as we get ready for our next break, I'm going to give both of you a chance to share some news. Any news that you want to share, Mike, before we get into a break? No, I'll, I'll hit it after we come back from the break. Oh, uh, that's perfect. Charles, any last uh, news <laughs> that you want to share before we get in that break? I know you wanted to. Yeah, real quick. And, and this comes to us from uh, HBCUsports.com. Uh, but uh, big news, uh, Tennessee State basketball legend Dick Barnett. You know, Dick Barnett, of course, played with the New York Knicks. But Barnett played at Tennessee State. Then then it was called Tennessee A&I from 1955 to 1959. But he's been nominated for – uh, the Basketball Hall of Fame. Of course, he played under legendary head coach John McClendon. He led the Tigers to three consecutive NAIA championships in 1957, 1958, and 1959. They were the first HBCU to win an integrated national title, as well as the first program at any level to three-peat as national champions. So, Dick Barnett uh, finally getting his just due in terms of becoming a finalist for the NBA Hall of Fame. 
Yes, let's get it over the hump. Let's get in. Dick Barnett deserves to be in on multiple levels. Obviously, he won a championship with the New York Knicks, that talented team. They got it done. They had a couple of HBCU stalwarts on their team, legends in terms of bringing that championship, and you hadn't seen it since in New York. Obviously, they've gotten close with a couple of finals, but uh, when you think about the historical nature, as time passed, it becomes even more important. So a lot of good stuff there in terms of the mix, so I'm glad – you were able to put that in there. Shout out to uh, Raja Karu finishing third at Daytona season over. Uh, that's big news in terms of NASCAR. He finds a way to continue to be in the mix. And Hawks are doing their sixth annual HBCU night in Atlanta. Mike, you know, maybe we're going to have to find this as a reason to get to Atlanta to do uh, HBCU night uh, with the Hawks. I heard you can get your tickets pretty pretty good at these days. Maybe we get some floor seats. We'll let Charles get us some floor seats. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. With that, let's take our first break, come back on the other side, have a little too much fun here. We'll talk about the mid-major women's top five. There's some changes in this one. <laughs> so hold on to your hat. Let me know what you think. Yes, Mike? With that, we'll take our, our first break. We'll come yeah, back evidently, all we need to do is, is toss around Charles' name, and we good. We are solid. <laughs> oh, I told you that. I told you that. Now, now Atlanta, he's big. But you go to Jackson, oh, he's other world. He's other world. <laughs> <laughs> Charles and Jackson, man. That's like, wow. This is real. They, they treated me real, man. Real we enough. try. We try. We try to take care of Doc once we get over to Jackson. Oh, yeah. Jackson, this is for, for the people. <laughs> that being said, we'll, we'll be right back after this first break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers voice, Kevers voice, Kevers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www. Dot slow burn Waco. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose, yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, the professors in the building, and we added AD Drew. He's the HBC Sports Analyst specializing more than others in terms of HBCU D2 sports. Um, as he works with his camera, we're going to give him a timeout. I don't know if he's trying to moon us or what there, but, you know. <laughs> Talk about the Major League Baseball pants they got out there. <laughs> with that, we'll let him get his camera straight. We'll get in there, get him back in the mix, make sure that uh, we can get him in here as he's working on the sound bring into that mix with that being said we're going to get into the mid-major division of the women's 
As I said, we do have a new team in the top five. We'll see, we'll see what that looks like as we have AD Drew back here. Before we get into it, let me give my proper welcome. Welcome to the show today, AD. Good to have you back. How you doing? Man, just another day in paradise, Dr. Premier. Just another day in paradise. Man, I like the way you live and speak. I know that's right. Just another day in paradise. <laughs> uh, any day that we have any chance to continue to be among each other is a great day. With that being said, let's get in the top five. We did have a team dropping out, as you see. Xavier, the Gold Nuggets, at 21 and 5, 17 and 3. They've stumbled over the last couple of weeks where they've had a loss. They have another loss among the two last week. And this week it finally bit them. They were able to kind of stay in the pole last week. They fell to five, but this week they fall out. Uh, as they fall to 21 and 5, 73 on the season. You still see them that it receiving votes, and they're just outside of the top five, if you would, along with Savannah State Tigers that are 17 and 5 and 13 and 4. Again, as Xavier out of the Red River Athletic Conference uh, and Savannah State out of the SIAC. Don't have these teams listed, but I wanted to give a little love to Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. 17 and 6, 13 and 4, playing some really good basketball outside of the top five, as well as fifth to, out of Tennessee. The Bulldogs mm -hmm. are 7, 7, 14 and 2, as well as Philander Smith. The Panthers are 21 and 6, 14 and 3, playing solid, uh, seeing if they can push Russ. We'll see what that looks like. But Philander Smith, keep your eyes on them as they're playing some good basketball in the GCAC. Let's get into the top five which give us the chance to see the first team that is in the top five that jumped in the top five. We've quietly told you about lengths and lines on the men's side. We've also whispered a little bit about the lady lines. Now it's time to speak a little louder as they have roared to a 21 and five record overall, 16 and four in the Sooner Athletic Conference with 49 points. They jumped in the top five as they were not ranked last week. At number four, you have none other than Miles Lady Golden Bears. They have quietly gotten to 20 wins. They're 20 and four, 16 and two. They've overtaken the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. Remember, they were the team that dropped Kentucky State from the undefeated in conference play. They did that, and now they have surpassed them in that Eastern Division, and they are rolling. We move up a spot from five last week with 53 points. Moving us to number three, Virginia State Lady Trojans, 21 and 4, 12 and 4. They had two big wins this past weekend. They are solid as they get ready to head into the CIAA tournament in Baltimore next week. They have 60 points and they move up a spot in week number seven. Bringing us to number two, Fayetteville State. The Lady Broncos are at 23 and 2, 16 and 1, three first place votes. They're in the Northern Division. So, uh, they do have a win over the Virginia State Lady Trojans. Still should be fascinating to see if these two teams can hold up the drama of a tournament and face off in a championship game as the two number one seeds it looks like they should be. Even though Virginia State um, is sitting in the two spot uh, in that CIAA Southern Division, I mean Northern Division, we'll see what that looks like. But they remain number two this week uh, as with Fayetteville State. At number one, Russ Lady Bearcats, they are rolling 24 and 3, 16 and 1, which means Charles continues to smile and the old Bishop household is doing well. <laughs> Russ Lady Bearcats are top of the polls. They have no problem with me, no problem with Charles. We'll see what the rest of the team says with five first place votes, 77 total points. They are rolling and remain number one. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see because. The tournament for GCAC will be a tough one as usual. We'll see last year they had that scare. They got it done. But much like Langston, I'm interested to see as they <coughs> no question will get a bid in the NAI tournament, can they make a run? That's one of the questions we'll ask AD Drew when we get to it. But with that being said, that's the top five in the mid-major division women's basketball poll rankings for week number seven. Let's go to Mike and see what he thinks about the top five. So the the only problem I have, the only question I have is 
where on earth do you put uh you have Langston with their record, but you where is uh Savannah's no, I'm I'm sorry, I, I got it wrong. Or did Savannah State at at, at basically seventeen and five? You know, could they and, and Miles at twenty and four? Could you make an argument with their records for them being ranked higher? Yes, I think you could make an argument that they could rank higher. They've been in the mix, uh, as we said. Xavier fell out, so they were in there. But when you talk about Savannah State Tigers, they are on a nice run. Um, I think they're a little behind Kentucky State and certainly Miles, uh, the Lady Golden Bears. But I agree with you. I think you could make that argument. Get in the top yeah. five. With that being said, let me go to you, Charles, and get your thoughts on the top five. Let me talk a little bit about the Rush Lady Bearcats, and that way I can eat good in my house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about what is it about the rest? <laughs> <laughs> I get to eat real well at my house. I get to talk about the, the Rush Lady Bearcats, but uh, you talk about a program over the last five years. Uh, they're a step away from securing their fourth NAIA tournament appearance in, in five years, four out of five years. You can't say enough about that. Uh, that program is definitely rolling. Uh, when you take a look at some of the players uh, that got things going, Nia McGuire, she's a stat stuffer. Uh, you take a look at her stats, she uh, scores, rebounds, uh, one of the tops and assists for the Lady Bearcats. Uh, but it's uh, from what I understand, from what I've been told, it is the point guard, Blessed Dillingham, uh, that is a staple of this Russ Lady Bearcat team uh, gets everybody where they're supposed to be. And they're in the midst of making a, a great run. This is a phenomenal program. Uh, I concur with them being number one. Go Lady Bearcats. I love it. Talking about your Lady Bearcats as we go to Drew and get his thoughts on the mid-major pole rankings. The Bearcats have won 11 straight, to your point. Their last loss was to that Philander Smith team, mm -hmm. as I talk about, 77 to 68. But since then, they've been rolling. And that was their only loss in GCAC play. Uh, A.D. Drew, with that being said, what are your thoughts on the top five programs? I, I like the top five. But as we get closer to tournament time, I always have to ask the question, who's the one? What do I mean by who's the one? Who is the one that's going to lose in the early rounds of their conference tournament? Somebody on your list, Dr. Cavill, it never fails. No right. matter how good of a uh, post uh, regular season they have, there's that one team that they have trouble with that it seems like they get matched up with because of records in the postseason tournament. Who is going to be the one? I'm curious to see that. Talk about two teams that you don't have on, on this list. Kentucky State. They've got two of the top four scores in the SIAC, Grayson Kerr and Talia Gilbert. Is that more? Is that impressive, or is it more impressive that Savannah State has three of the top eleven? Amar Amari Heard, Maya Bird, and Nyla Allen. As far as scoring goes, which one is more impressive to you guys? Two of the top four, or three of the top eleven? I like two of the if. In terms of more impressive of scoring, I would say two of the top four. Two of the top four. In terms of the team, you probably like three of the top 11 because you're getting a little more spread out, and it's harder for a yeah. defense to potentially stop them. Great question. Yeah, so that, like I said, that's what it's going, that's what it's going to come down to. Match yes, up, but you as far as your overall, I, I, I was going to say, I do think you maybe for, there's a good argument to flip-flop Miles and Virginia State. That's, that's the one thing why? that you can sit here and debate uh, on. Virginia State. I want to hear this. Yeah, I'm like, Charles, mm. why would you flip them? I mean, you're right. They're right there in the, the schedule. You have Miles. I bet you it's the conference record, 16-2 and two versus the 12-4. and Because overall, they're sitting yeah. the same. I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, that, and, and that was what I was looking at, uh, the conference record. Uh, you know, you, you, we talk, we're splitting hairs as far as the level of competition because I think the top tier teams in the CIAA are just as good as the top tier teams in the in the SIAC. I like Miles because they play a little bit more defense, but that's just their style. There's no no disrespect to Virginia State; they're just a defensive first team 
who can put who can score some points. So you know, like I say, I'm splitting I'm splitting hairs. I'm putting something out there just for conversation piece when I say possibly flip those. But if but if you hear hear the gun to my head, Doctor Gaville, I tell you leave it alone. I, I hear you. All three of those teams <laughs> is tough though. To your point, I'm gonna ask Charles and then come back to you. I want to ask this question there. Uh, when you see Fayetteville State, Virginia State, in terms of 23 and 2 and 21 and 4, two of those top five teams, you have Miles that just that moved up, but you have Savannah State and Kentucky State, as Mike talked about Savannah State. Where do you see the toughest on the women's side? The CIAA with Virginia State, Fayetteville State, or the SIAC with Miles, Savannah State, and Kentucky State? Charles, which way are you leaning? Well, see, that was the question I was just about to ask. Where are we more likely to see the upset in the CIAA and the SIAC or even in the NAIA? I'm, I'm real curious about uh, what AD's statement about, you know, one of these is going is gonna to catch it somewhere. But I'm just curious as to what, what made you think in, in, in that regard. I've, I've been following this for, for too many years, Charles. It, it it happens. I mean, it, hell, it happened. It happens in the swack in the MIA. Look at what Texas Southern did last year. <laughs> you know, they caught Alcorn. It was that perfect matchup. The one team that they faced in the first round that they knew they could go in there and beat. Uh, Charles, you asked me that question. What school do you go to, and what happened to your women's team last year? Last year, there, there's 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 that matchup. There's that matchup that. It has nothing to do with the team, but that one matchup always catches somebody before the fights. So if you had if you had to ask me, because I've been to it and I personally witnessed it, I'm going to say somewhere in the SIAC, it is definitely going to happen because I have witnessed it too many times <laughs> in the SIAC tournament, both on the men's and the, the women's side. You know, the CIAA, for some reason, the CIAA, you tend to get the, the teams who you expect in the finals to be in the finals. Now, the team, they may not win the finals, but you tend to get the, the, uh, the two top teams in the, in the CIAA more often than you, than you do in the SIAC. SIAC, there's always some four seed or something like that in the finals. It, ju it just never fails. Yeah, that, that, that goes back years to – Eddie Drew, it'd be fascinating to kind of see what leads to that. But you're right. It's just something about the SIAC tournament that and, one of those top I, seeds will get knocked off. And I'll tell you what, one thing about the SIAC tournament, because they take every team, all 14, 15 teams. Yeah, that's a good sometimes, point. Sometimes the length of the tournament and those double buys tend to catch up with somebody. Those teams that play early in the tournament and have to play that extra game or two, they tend to get get hot, get their momentum, and they go knock off one of those teams that's been sitting around till Thursday. It it, it always happens. Shout out to and Willie. always looking for the drama. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and then we're talking about the drama. <laughs> Wendy, shout out. I love it with the bear bearcat footprints on there, showing love to those bearcats. I love it. With that, let's take our second no, break. We we'll come back on the other side. We're gonna talk about it from a men's perspective. Look at the mid-major division. We'll get these two gentlemen's perspective of what they think on week number seven for Dr. Ville's HBCU mid-major division men's basketball poll ranking for this week. Stick with us. Be right back after this break. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thins reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, 
and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of laugh and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Will inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into it. A couple of changes. Two teams drop out this weekend. The men's side It's getting real interesting as Tuskegee, excuse me, as Morehouse Maroon Tigers and Tougaloo Tornadoes, they both drop out 17 and 9, 14 and 5. And as Tougaloo uh, drops out 21 and 5, 13 and 3, uh, as you see. Texas College Steers are getting votes 15 and 4, as well as the two blue tornadoes at 21 and 5, uh, 13 and 3 with 24 points. Let's get everybody, in. Every, every, everybody in Jackson will jump on me. Two blue bulldogs. <laughs> 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 I want to make sure I make, make, a little time, let's make that correct. Two blue bulldogs. I got a text just now. So I was like, oh, God. Two blue bulldogs. <laughs> That's the Talladega tornadoes and two blue bulldogs uh, yeah, with yeah. that correction. Uh, mm -hmm. in terms of that update. Appreciate it in terms of that. At number five, we have Xavier, uh, the gold rush in the top five dropping out. I guess that's what happens when you drop out of the polls. You get some mix-up in your names. But, Charles, make sure that we continue to get the love from all the people out there. Jumping in the top five this week is Xavier, the gold rush on the men's side, 19-6, and 15-4, 47 points. They were not ranked as they jump into the poll rankings at number four this week. Moving Xavier as they're in the Red River Athletic Conference, uh, battling for a championship there to see if they can get it done. Let's get into number four. Benedict Tigers sitting at 20 and 5, 14 and 5 in the conference play out of the SIEC with 58 points. Uh, they remain at number four. At number three, Clark Atlanta Panthers, 21 and 4, 15 and 4, as they had a win and a loss. The big loss was to Miles. But they get the win over Morehouse this past weekend and sit at 64 points. Previous rank two, so they do drop a spot, which gives you a chance. At number two for Miles Golden Bears, they jump all the way in the pole and they jump all the way up to number two. At 19 and 5, 14 and 4, they make a major statement. Two big wins, including a win over Clark Atlanta, as they bump them down uh, to show what they're about. With 70 points, they jump into the pole all the way to number two. But number one should not surprise anybody. Langston Lions, two wins, 25 and one, 19 and one, eight overall. One thing that was intrigued about Langston Lions, the number one team last week, and then I dropped a loss as Langston clinched, as you know by now, Sooner Athletic, and they did that last week on Thursday. They've won three games since then in terms of what that looks like. But with that being said, is the NII top 25 poll rankings, they only do – Polls every two weeks. Um, so it gives the number one team a chance to kind of fix themselves, uh, much like you saw Langston when they lost a couple of weeks ago, but remain at two. I'm intrigued next week when the poll comes out. Who will be number one in the NIA? Will it be Langston uh, finding a way to jump in that poll, or will they stay at number two? But that being said, the number one continue to be number one as they are rolling uh, in week number seven with the mid major poll rankings there. I'm going to start with you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this week's top five on the men's side? Uh, and let me say it again, uh, two blue bulldogs and Talladega tornadoes. With that being said, top five, what are your thoughts? Langston, uh, I, I agree with the top five. Langston has done what they need to do, 25-1, superbly impressive. 
the intriguing team to me, and I and I come back to the SIAC is Miles, and I know AD, you had an opportunity to see them up close uh, in, in terms of playing Allen, but uh, they won seven in a row. What is it about this Miles team that really stands out? Defense, defense, mm-hmm. and more defense. Charles, explain to me how you do not score for the first six minutes of a ball game. Give up 14, the first 14 points of a ball game and, and send the game to overtime. Hmm. By, Locking it down. I mean, yeah. yeah. Explain that to me. Oh, By, you, know how you, you know how you do that? When you come out in the second half and score the first 12 points of the second half, both them scoreless for the first eight minutes of the second half. That's how you can make it up, and that's and that, what I saw. T- that's what I saw Tuesday night, and and I, and I've got the tape to prove it. And another it hostile, all to sit at the overtime. I was about to say another hostile atmosphere in Birmingham. Huh? Y- y- y'all saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I guess if 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 I may add into that, it's not just that game. If you look at the last few games, they they also number one in score margin or, or margin. So they're allowing teams only 60 points per game. That's yeah. that's number one. So that's over the course of so many games, 20-some-odd games, plus their margin is 9.3. So, And you may say that's low if you look at some of the other major margins, but the only person that's ahead of them is Benedict. So their defense is clearly the star of the show. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely the star of the show. Coach uh, Boston has a panic and – the thing about Miles, when you get them in Knox Wyndham Gymnasium, mm-hmm. you're talking about one of the most intimidating yeah. arenas in black college basketball. Charles, you've been there. That was fun. That was fun. And, and, yeah. and that would, you know, Lord Jesus, let it be a weeknight. <laughs> Did you say Lord Jesus? He's calling yeah. him. Did you say <laughs> Man, you went all Holy Ghost, so it must be so. <laughs> Hey, let, 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 let it be a weeknight, bro. Give, give them an excuse. Greek yeah. night, uh, 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 fried chicken night, whatever the excuse <laughs> is. Let them students come up in there and pack out that gym. Oh, my God, man. I, I, all I'm going to say is, thank God, when I was coaching at Tuskegee, we never played them over there. Mm. Mm. Played them at Fairfield. Yes, we played them in Fair Park because they, uh, at that point in time, Fair the administration Park. wanted to get wanted the uh, gate, and they, you know, that that gym where they have it only holds a thousand, and you would get probably close to three thousand for a Tuskegee Miles game. Nice, yeah, I bet you that was a nice environment as well. But it's something about being in that band box with a thousand folks squeezed in there, uh, excited about their team. With that being said. Uh, any final thoughts, Mike, on the top five concerns you have? No, no the I guess the, the one, I don't know if they pull them out, is uh, I think you have Clark Atlanta up there, right? Hmm. Yeah, yes. they, uh, yep, they're number three, right? So, yeah, and right. then, I, and then if you look at the you know statistics and look at their record, you know, can they make a push throughout the entire of the season? They started out. You know, man, Clark Atlanta's doing all this, leading the league in scoring and doing this. You know, since then, you know, they've 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 kind of evened out a bit. So I'm just uh, just curious as to how they even out the season. You know, scoring 76 points a game, their defense has fluttered a little. So other than that, no problems with the poll whatsoever. Clark Atlanta was rolling. Until they went down the miles. To yeah. <laughs> exactly. The I, then they came probably, back on Saturday and had that battle in Morehouse and got the yeah. win to let you know pretty strong. So to your point, it's interesting. It's just dangerous, for lack of better words, in the SIEC in the uh, Eastern Division. You got Benedict, that was top 25 team. Yeah, Morehouse, that is solid. Clark Atlanta. And that doesn't even talk about Allen and some of the other teams, Edward Waters, which is a tough place to play. So you're right. It's fascinating when you look at that. Charles, what did you want to add to that? But Morehouse and Benedict have defeated Miles. So I just yeah, I just caught my eye there. So yeah. yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's just there. But this is a question I want to ask AD Drew about this. As we start to get prepared for the playoff team, it's obviously in regards to the SIC that they're pretty deep in the top. They don't play often a lot of non-conference games. You got a couple of big wins by Clark Atlanta early. Uh, you yeah. got a couple of big wins, particularly by Benedict. Obviously, one of those wins by Clark really doesn't measure because it was a D1 win. But with that being said, from what you can tell now, how many teams potentially can the SIC get in the tournament, particularly would it seem like the CIAA is down? I know you got your regions and all that at play, but for those that may not be as familiar with the D2 side of things versus what we see, automatic bids for the Division One tournament, talk us a little bit through that process and what are your thoughts at this point? Yeah. Uh, tournament winner will get an automatic bid. Uh, yep. And if I re- recall the Gulf South and the Sun, Sun yep. Coast Conference, I believe is what it's called, yes, or the two other conferences that go into the uh, into the region with the, uh, with the SIAC. So basically, you're talking five spots that are going to be available because th- uh, three of them are already gone due to the, uh, due to the automatic. Mm-hmm. SIC should get a minimum of two of those spots. If if you get the the right final four, mm. you may sneak a third team in there. But it. it would have to be it would have to be Miles, Morehouse, Benedict, and Clark in the final four of the SIAC tournament. If any one of those teams suffers a early defeat. Their chances of getting in are probably going to be slim. I think Tuskegee last year was the exception with what happened to them. But they did have the fact that they won the regular season of the SIAC last year. So Miles has won the West. The East is still up for grabs. So if anybody could get in probably with an early loss, it's probably Miles because they are the West Division, uh, Western Division champions. Right now, that that East is so so much parity in that East, and those three teams are, are so close together. It's going to be it's going to be tough on whoever you know, is the first one out of those Eastern teams. Mm-hmm. Good yep. stuff. It's going to be fascinating as we get in these tournaments to kind of see how things play off. Obviously, I have an eye on the NIA. Xavier looks like they're not locked um, on the men's side, but you have Texas colleges right there with them. In terms of what that looks like, obviously Langston is going to be in the mix. But when you get into GCAC, quietly, Philander Smith sitting at 18 and 7, 14 and 3, Tougaloo, uh, 21 and 5, 13 and 3. And then you have Talladega at 26 and 9 and 4. AD Drew, what did you want to add to that mix on the NAI side? Watch that team down south, Florida Memorial. Ooh, that that yeah. is team. They got a lot of D one transfers on that team. That is going to be the team to watch in this in this Sun Conference. If they can get into the it AIAs, I think that particular team can make some noise in the uh, in the NAIA. But they've got to get through that gauntlet called the Sun Conference, and there are a couple of good teams in that Sun Conference, which they are one of those. Uh, Top top three teams in that conference as far as talent goes. Now that's a sneaky good point that you made there when you look at what they're doing down in Florida Memorial down down south as you like to say it. I like that mix deep down there and there in the Florida. I want to also shout out a little bit to um, the Virgin Islands uh, on the men's side. They got a couple of big victories over the cop weekend. They were struggling for loans, but they finally got over the hump and got some wins under their belts and uh, as a program. Is adding in the challenge they have uh, in trying to get it done. It looks like they've made some moves on this side. So I wanted to give a little bit of credit, a little bit of shout out there in terms of Virginia, I mean, the Virgin Islands uh, in terms of GCAC play. You have another one, well, there, AD Drew? Go, go back to Division Two. One to, one to look out for, and just because of how tough their conference is, watch Lincoln of Missouri. Hmm. Lincoln of Missouri, they play in arguably one of the, just like they play in one of the toughest, probably the toughest football conference. They also play in one of the toughest 
basketball conferences on the uh, division. I certainly games. agree. That's a tough basketball and conference that, up there. And if they can, if they can get on a run, they're they're in the upper half of the conference. If they get the right matchups and get on a the run, they they can make some noise and possibly uh, sneak into the tournament. And to your point, for those that are not realizing, Florida Memorial sits at twenty-one and six overall. The eight and five in the conference play that kind of puts them out there. But you're right; if they can spin it, get it going in the tournament, they're going to be a tough one. With that being said, uh, Ad Drew, are you able to stick with us to talk a little bit about the Division One matchups as we get into our last segment for this week? Uh, yeah, you know, come, come on now, Doc. You, you, you know me, man. <laughs> I, 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 I love I love being with the fellas. Uh, the only thing missing is, is is the cigar and the brew. Uh, that's it. He showed sure right. Stick with us. We'll be right back after the break. We'll see if we can bring that back as well. Is, is that it? That ain't all we drink, man. Don't, don't, don't go G-rated because we on TV. That ain't it. You miss it. You know what you mean. Let's get you this next break. We're missing that brown. We're missing that brown. I knew it. Itchy. Squirmy. Scratchy. Family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire. 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. thamptonlaw.com. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When you can press the analytic data with your hip hop, if you know them like I know them, they're gonna tell you if your team, if they wanna love that, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Shout out to A.D. Drew. I told you we bring him in here as that um, mid-major HBCU specialist. He can do it in all levels, but particularly doing it there. Shout out to Maya Buchanan uh, from Rust College. Charles, check this out. NAIA Player of the Week, the second one in terms of her honors this week. So that's pretty bad. But I want to set up the call. Give A.D. Drew his flowers now in terms of uh, bringing in here. If we can, uh, from our producer, go ahead and play that for us. 1.3 seconds remain in the ball game. You'll go to Bears trail by three. And by the ball will be true at Spencer. Ball comes in to Alvin Miles. Chase Ballard over to Spencer. Spencer's shot. Got it down. We are tied. Eleven, ten, out there with no time out remaining. Alden, jump shot, no good. 
We got no good. We have free basketball in the Knox Wendell Gymnasium. This is all of everybody. Let's talk go crazy. Man, boy. Woo. <laughs> Did you have his hype, man? Man. Woo, shout out, shout out. Go make me want to scale a wall or something. I'm serious, man. And, and Charles has been there. You don't realize how loud you are because you, you just have to talk loud on the mic just to hear yourself, not realize how loud you sound. Until I heard it, I was like, "Damn, was I shout that loud? Was that, that exciting?" <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing but laugh because I, I, I know that feeling where, where you got the headsets on, but you don't realize how loud you are in the mic because everybody is behind you, so. behind you, yeah, and you hear all the ambient noise in the gym. <laughs> yeah, and your natural inclination is to get loud with them because you think people can't hear you. Uh, but yes. with that being said, it was an incredible Thanks, call. Brad. First of all, you get a big time play. Uh, and I love the fact that you let the action speak for itself. So you let the play kind of play out and then try to guess what was taking place, and you just announced the action. So great job yes, there. Sir. Let's get into some of this D1 talk and big plays this weekend. Uh, on the men's side, we have a couple of matchups going on now. We'll give you these up dates, if you would. Um, hopefully, we talked about this matchup between Stony Brook and a t Well, the men are playing now. Uh Obviously, different total matchup with the men 14-3, and t just 7-20. and 20. But hopefully the women can do a little better than that because right now the men of A&T are getting drilled 64-38. to uh, You have Hampton that in a halftime matchup with Campbell at 33-31, leading at half. Can they hold up and get another win on this season and get it done? And you have Tennessee State that is uh, with the women's side. They're falling, they're uh, behind, if you would, EIU. 56 to 60. So the men will obviously come up and play later uh, in the coastal. Men play on Thursday, women on uh, Friday. The same thing with Saturday, Sunday type of matchup. So just to give you an update there. Intrigued about a couple of key matchups as we get into it. Charles touched on it a little bit this past week, but I want to get take a deeper dive with all of y'all since the heavy and see what are some of your big games. Uh, what's your thoughts? We'll kind of start it out, Shivery, with the women's side, um, getting into the MEAC in terms of what that looks like, set you up uh, in terms of some overall record. Norfolk State has been solid in terms of last week getting some big key wins uh, with some other tough losses. They're in a relatively solid position. They're at 8-1 and one conference race at, with North Carolina Central Eagles. It's probably have surprised some things. You know, we talked about some of the surprises in the SWAT with FAMU playing solid on the women's side, first-year coach. Also with Gramlin really overachieving in a lot of people's head was Central. The Eagles down there are playing some really good basketball from that perspective. They're two games back at 6-3 and three, tied with Coppin State, uh, as well as Howard Bison. It really doesn't surprise anybody in terms of what the women's are doing to Bison. Uh, but three-way tie for second, so some key – uh, games that will come up this week. Saturday, first set of games, Morgan and Howard. Delaware State at South Carolina State. South Carolina State is struggling with just one win on the season. Maryland Eastern Shore at North Carolina Central. Norfolk State taking on Coppin State, but they go on the road to get it done to see if they can get it done, I should say. On Monday, you have Delaware State at North Carolina Central. Maryland Eastern Shore at South Carolina State. Norfolk State and Morgan State, Coppin State and Howard. For the sake of time, we won't break them all down, but I want to go to each one of you and pick out one game out of the series this weekend that you have your eyes on and why. I'll start with you, Mike. What game in the MEAC has your focus this weekend uh, as you kind of look at the overall theme of things? So I, I got to look at, what is it, one, one, and, one and three, one and four? Uh, is it Norfolk State? Um, going against, um, uh, is it Coppin, Coppin. State? Yeah, yeah, Coppin State. So I, I, I think that one intrigues me. Number one, I think, Doc, because you mentioned it, they're on the road. But I'm then looking at statistics and defense allowed. You know, that could be a game that gets very, very, uh, you know, I don't say, you know, defensive. Norfolk State's allowing 54 points a game. 
They're scoring 68, so they're number one, they're number one in margin. Uh, Coppin State is not so good. Uh, however, they're only allowing 60 points per game. So, you know, you wonder on a good night at home, can Coppin State kind of push the issue there with Norfolk State um, you know, from at least from a defensive standpoint, the only part is you know Coppin State's offense has fluttered at times. Um, they're only scoring 56, 55 points a game, uh, whereas Norfolk State is outscoring them. But you know their defense has shown up on a few nights. So that game, that one, one versus three or four, that one intrigues me most. Charles, what do you say about those matchups? What sticks out to you? What do you keep your eyes on? I'm probably going to agree with Mike, uh, Norfolk State and Coppin State. I mean, uh, Norfolk State only beat them by eight at home. Uh, now they go on the road to take on Coppin State. So that'll be interesting. Uh, Norfolk State team that is uh, one in the top 25 uh, in mid- latest mid-major poll, I think number 17, if I'm not mistaken, Jackson State sitting right in front of them at 16. But uh, that, that one is probably the one that intrigues me the most. Eddie Drew, what direction are you going with the MEAC for the women matchups? I, t- I tend to agree with Howard, uh, Howard and Coppin State, but uh, let's, let's look at Norfolk and Morgan. I, I, I think, you know, Norfolk sit, sitting at the top, be, being chased, they used, you know, they used to be in there, but th- this is that time of year where sometimes complacency may come in as, as they, have, they have a lead in the conference, so I'm just curious to see if they can continue the ship and make the right strides towards the tournament. I think another one that's interesting, while I agree with you, that's a focal point, but also on Monday you have that Coppin at Howard, and obviously for seeding purposes, particularly if Coppin can't get it done against Norfolk State, the one that you pointed out, then this game becomes even more important for Coppin to try to figure out if they can get one. So great points. Let's look at some of these key SWAC uh, matchups on the women's side. I think I know where you're going here. But just for the sake of uh, breaking it down, you have Jackson State at Alcorn. Uh, It's a rivalry matchup. Uh, Jackson State sees if they can continue with their undefeated season. Uh, You have Alabama State at FAMU in their game, I should say before I go, that Jackson State is two a game for a clinching at least a share of the regular season championship. But a loss by Gramlin means they can do it this weekend. So it'll be interesting. Talking about Gramlin, they go to Baton Rouge to take on Southern, another rivalry matchup. Uh, fascinating with those two teams at the top of the conference uh, behind Jackson State. So interesting to see what that looks at. You have Alabama State at FAMU, uh, which means you have Alabama A&M at Bethune-Cookman, and you have Prairie View at Pine Bluff. Uh, obviously, we've seen the dust up with Pine Bluff. How do they rebound? What does it mean for that matchup? It is a home game, uh, so it'll be fascinating to see what that looks like. And then you have Texas Southern and Valley. Obviously, it flips on Monday, so I won't call those matchups out. But starting with you, Charles, which direction are you going for key matchup uh, this weekend that you want to keep your eyes on? I think you touched on it. I think the one that I'm paying most uh, attention to this weekend uh, is Prairie View and, and Texas Southern uh, Saturday, Monday, uh, respectively going to UAPB. Uh, we saw – turmoil on their bench that you know that's just not normal and that thing can that that can get off the rails uh real quick so i'm really curious as to see what prairie view and texas southern can do this weekend uh golden opportunity for both teams to go 2-0 and and sort of get themselves back into the uh and at least get into that that uh eight seed uh in terms of getting to the, the swag tournament i think you probably said it the way you you wrote that down just not normal you're right. Uh, with that being said, Mike, what are your thoughts in terms of a key matchup for you this weekend? Yeah, for, for me, I I don't know if it's key. I think it'll be interesting because I'm I'm leaving I'm leaving Jackson State alone. They the big dog. They eating the big piece of chicken. They 13 and 0. Nobody's messing with their plate. Then it's everybody else. You know it, the, and the next, the next little dog that's getting close to the table is Grandma. Wait, State. Do you want your cornbread? <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. So, so Grandma State sitting at ten and three, an interesting ten and three. They have, uh, they have Southern, who I think they beat the brakes off of earlier this year, but they got them at Southern now. Southern's number four. 
So that number two, four matchup, you know, is Southern going to make a run and say, hey, you know, we're nine and four. We're one of the two teams at nine and four. We're, you know, you know, we're tied with Pine Bluff. Or is that Grandma State going to make the sta- the emphatic statement and say, no, we big dog number two. We get the next big piece of chicken. So that's, you know, that's what statistically it would, you would have Grambling. They're outscoring them. They're out defending them. But I don't know. Something can happen at the end of the season, you know, where Southern at home, ha- you know, pulls out a game out of their derriere and plays well. So that game intrigues me. Gentlemen, I would hate to go to Mike's family reunions because it sounds like he keep what all the women there can get really interesting in terms of these plates and chicken. But it sounds like, you know, the <laughs> big dog, if you would, using that vernacular on the plate, nobody's asking Jackson State for their cornbread. With that being said, hey, <laughs> which, direction are you, which direction are you going in terms of this match, in this matchup? Which one did you look at? It? <laughs> Well, it's kind of interesting, Doc, you know, especially this time you end of February, 1st of March, you start to wonder how many uh, teams where they break the huddle or talk or saying one, two, three, spring break. You know, if it was in the league, we say one, two, three, Cancun, <laughs> but it's one, two, three, spring break. <laughs> Charles, but, look uh, like he pointed the direction of somebody going to the beach. <laughs> going to the beach is that way. <laughs> But but, but the right. one team, the one team I want to focus on is Alabama A and M, as they play both of the uh, the Florida teams uh, on, over this weekend. You know, they could be a flip where Alabama A and M could wind up behind both of the Florida teams if they do not do what they're supposed to do and take care of business this weekend against the uh, against the Florida teams. And the question, speaking of the Florida teams. Uh, can anybody slow down Ariana Grizzle from Florida A and M University? I yeah, hope she not. Is, she's a swag leading scorer. She is. Yeah, leading scorer. So by like and, two points, and it, like almost it, three it, points it, a it, game. It, it, it ain't even close. She just south of twenty points per game. Ain't nobody close. Yeah. I think next person is sixteen eight or something like that. Yeah, yeah, five, uh, yeah. What's her like name? What's her name from Prime Buff? And then you actually got Prairie View sitting at number three at about sixteen. So uh, the next three players are around 16 points a game. She's right just under 20. You might We're going to call it a cool 20 point, points per game. Yeah. So nobody's been able to stop her, really. <laughs> Look at Florida yeah. ADM trying to play a little basketball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charles, I'm, hey, Charles, I'm like, ain't that cute? Ain't that cute? <laughs> Fam, you sitting right now where they sit at in the standings, is that not the shocker of – Swack women's basketball this year, especially considering how late they hired their coach. And yeah, like, they hired I the coach the week before school started. She they didn't, didn't, have, done she a didn't lot. recruit anybody. She brought one done, player with her. Yeah, I, I think in a lot of ways, you certainly got to look at uh, with FAMU in terms of what they did. Um, but there's a lot of room to make an argument for Gramlin. I don't yeah. think people have thought much about yeah. Gramlin, but I wouldn't fault either one. If somebody said FAMU or said Gramlin, I'm not getting mad because I think you can go in either direction. You're right. Those two teams have uh, outkicked the coverage, as they say, in right. regards to succeeding on what they did in the season. So great point there. Let's go to the men's side. We'll make this pretty quick. I think it's obvious all the eyes are going to be in Baton Rouge and Southern in terms of this matchup, um, in terms of your first place. But if you had the Jet and you were able to get to another game, or as Charles liked to talk, talk about those Monday uh, trap games, let down, whatever, Manic Monday, as you talk about. Maybe there's a game on Monday that you keep your eyes on. I'm going to go with you first, Charles. Uh, outside of the Saturday matchup with Grambling and Southern, where are you going to keep your eyes on in terms of these SWAT games? Texas Southern at UAPB. Uh, yep. UAPB, a little bit uh, up and down in terms of uh, their basketball team this season, but they did beat Texas Southern uh, earlier in the season. But this is a huge weekend for Texas Southern men's basketball team. They got an opportunity to go 2-0, uh, Bally, UAPB, and it can gain on whomever wins this Southern grammar uh, in terms of uh, getting that push. And I think I turned to you Monday night with that win over Southern. I said, that's the Texas Southern team. Nobody wants to see because once those guards get to coming downhill and getting in the lane, they create all sorts of havoc. They open the court up, and when Texas Southern is knocking down some threes and playing the defense that they are, 
in tournament time, it becomes a Texas Southern invitation. Everybody be looking at that uh, yeah. uh, eight-man corner over there with Charles, and you did turn and said it, <laughs> and I said my eight-man. <laughs> <laughs> With that, with that being said, uh, I agree with you, Charles. But Mike, what direction are you going? It sounds like you said yes. You're agreeing with it. You stick. Yeah, that, that. Yeah, I, and I agree with it because uh, it, it, it's going to depend on which UAPB you get. I mean, UAPB, yeah. despite where they are, they still lead the league in scoring, 80 points a game. But they can't see, seem to defend a gnat from taking your uh, your bottom fries. Bottom of the league. Bottom, yeah, of, the bottom league. of the league. So which yeah. which UAPB team you get? And I also agree. History says that TSU has a knack of being that X factor at the end of the year. For whatever reason, they seem to sneak up on folks. So to me, that game is very interesting. I want to see which Pine Bluff team we gonna get the one that's leading the swag or the the one that's at the bottom in defense the and allowing the swag. Yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah told, exactly. uh, I'm concerned about Mike and his family reunions. Now he's bringing up Nats. I understand people be uh, having a problem with Nats, but he said the fact that they're going to get your fries. I don't know what size Nats he's talking about, but I'm a little concerned when the Nats stop bothering you, but they actually start taking your fries. That's Man, these Nats. Conversation. I'm not going to go there. Eddie Drew, uh, what, are you, what is your game outside of that Grandma Southern game? What are you looking at? Actually, I, I, I want to focus on the team and what they need to handle this weekend. And that's you guys' alma mater. That's Prairie View A and L. You know, mm-hmm. this is the, the the SWAC basketball tournament is not called the Texas Open for, for without a reason. You know, yeah. usually one of those yep. two teams, Prairie View or or Texas Southern, usually make some noise in the SWAC tournament. I mean, what like five of the last six years, six of the last seven years, yep. one of those two teams has, has yep. won the dog on. Me inside of the tournament. That's right. Now, preview. They've got one team they need to beat, and one team they should be and damn sure better beat them. They got they got UAPB on Saturday. Saturday. They need to beat UAPB because that's a team immediately ahead of them in the stand. If you if you get that game against UAPB, please do not slip up and lose to winless Valley. Yeah. Valley is the game you cannot <laughs> afford to lose if you're Prairie View and you're trying to and you're trying to get into that eight slot. I'm sorry, it, it, I can't say it any point any plainer. One, you need to handle to control your business. The other one, just just don't just don't slip up on 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 those manic Mondays as we like to call them. I'm gonna go off of that. I like both all of y'all picks, but I'm gonna <laughs> go to Mississippi. I told you they treated me well down there. So I'm going to stick with it. You got Jackson State on the road at all corner the Braves. Both teams sit at eight and five, and they have a puncher's chance out of their first place. Certainly the winner of this game puts themselves uh, in position to be in the top four. Both of them have won four straight games and playing some really good basketball. After um, Jackson State it out, Jackson State started out well, but went into a swoon, and all corner kind of got there early. But now both of them are saying, hello, we're back in the picture so this one's a big one in regards to the seating and the standing so i'm gonna go off the grid and go in that direction the last one we're gonna look at is in the MEAC, uh which is just uh looking wild in terms of just how deep the teams are norfolk state um, got the benefit of a call not to say it was wrong but just the benefit of the call when you look at the game against south carolina state or as drew talked about many years ago on the football side of the thing in terms of me is the term he kind of coined it's come back again now on men's basketball norfolk state did get the win to their credit and they sit at the top in really good position now sitting at seven and two but you have five teams that are just two games back going down the stretch that's morgan state bears sitting at five and four South Carolina State Bulldogs sitting at five and four. North Carolina Central that had two tough losses that have meant they have lost three straight are sitting at five and four. And Howard is kind of rebounded and got back into business, sit at five and four, even though they lost their last game. And all of a sudden, Delaware State that you we told you was strong, they figured out how to win again, and they won two straight, and they sit at five and four. So, again, you have five teams in the mix, so – you can go in any direction, so I'll just 
announce it real quick. More in at Howard, Maryland at Central, Delaware State at South Carolina State, Norfolk at Coppin, and then on Monday, to make things even more interesting, is Maryland needs to show at South Carolina State, Delaware State at North Carolina Central, Norfolk at Morgan State, Coppin State at Howard. I dare you to go to any direction because I won't argue with you because I'm going to say it's correct. With that being said, <laughs> just tell me which one you're going to keep your eyes on, and I'll say, okay, Mike, what are you looking at this weekend? Man, it, it's, it's gotten confusing there, but <laughs> I, I'm serious. It's gotten confusing, but uh, – I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with uh see you you know you know you don't even got you know I'm gonna look at who Delaware State is playing because I look at where we said that they were end up and they have Central coming up um so that should be interesting there uh so I I'll, I'll go I'll go Delaware State and they have Central coming up to me that's gonna be interesting if you look at what Delaware State because. I remember three or four weeks ago, Delaware State was at the bottom, and everybody was asking, "What's up with Delaware State?" Uh, ever since then, you know they've lost a few, but now I, I'll go with them against Central, and I think that's Central. Monday, I believe. Monday, yeah, it is a Monday matchup on the road for Delaware State, boy. You talking about hurting some feelings, yeah? Uh, in uh, uh, for Central, the Eagles down there, Mudu Stadium. With that being, uh, Jim, I should say, Charles, what direction are you going? I'm following Delaware State wherever they go this weekend. Uh, they go to South Carolina State. Like, weird stuff is happening down there at South Carolina State. Resurgent <laughs> basketball program. And then they got Central on Monday. So I'm following Delaware State wherever they go this weekend. That's where my eyes will be. I guess Charles has got into the family reunion party. He said, watch out for the Hornets over there. Make sure you stay in your backyard. A.D. Drew? I'm going with the Biakis staying, and that'll be Delaware State's travel partner. That's going to be Maryland Eastern Shore uh, this weekend. And the reason I'm going with that is there are only two games behind all that glutton of mess that you just talked about, Dr. Kabir. Right. So if they went wind up picking those two games, now they're back in the mix and you got everybody but Coffin with a shot to win it at that point. So <laughs> let's go with the Biakish thing and go with Maryland Eastern Shore. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. That'll do it for us today. Thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. You got your HBC basketball mix. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Ville, the dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the college of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Ville's inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, check out AD Drew Bryan and AD on Sports Wrap this Sunday. As they'll give you some highlights and get in the mix and give you updates. Obviously, ONG strikes on every Wednesday as well. Keep your eyes on that. Dr. Kenyatta Caville on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. And uh, inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on X, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Again, thank you for all those that help us in terms of on-demand on YouTube reaching 1K uh, obviously did it differently, not in terms of the live. So it took us a while to get there, but I purposely wanted to see how they look and how we tech. With that being said, Dream Big, continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. Drew? This, this. Why you got to do all special stuff like that? <laughs> why you got to? We, 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 why you got to go all? <laughs> all right, dismissed. <laughs>